Hi, I'm Juan Diaz with Sones de Mexico Ensemble. We are a group of touring and recording musicians who specialize in son, which is a family of styles of Mexican folk music, and we believe that this music has universal appeal. We're also a nonprofit organization that focuses on music and dance education, and we've been doing programs in many cities since the group formed in 1994. If A equals two. One of the units I teach is called Mexican Songs and Algebra. I think it's a, a title that makes people curious because these are not two words that people usually think of together. I hope that by the end of this video, I can change your mind. I always hear people talking about the relationship between music and math and how music skills acquired during an early age translate into proficiency in math years later. But when you hear songs that are supposed to build your math skills by singing arithmetics, like one plus one is two, four times two is eight, the square root of 144 is 12, etc., uh, and you're not really using any particular math skills to just sing the equations. In Mexican songs and algebra, we use algebra to create musical arrangements and express musical ideas and solve musical problems just using algebra. The class is divided into three parts, uh, basic, mid-level, and advanced. In the basic level, we start with a very simple concept. For example, when you are singing a song and you are supposed to repeat the chorus twice, sometimes you're right. 2x next to it. Now if you think of this in a very simple algebraic expression, x is a variable that stands for a chorus, and 2 is the number of times you're going to sing that chorus. So if x equals Cuando la luna sale bien de mi vida y el sol se esconde Se prende un farolito y sale la gente no sé de donde Then 2x means that we sing it again. Cuando la luna sale bien de mi vida y el sol se esconde Se prende un farolito y sale la gente no sé de donde We also try this with single lines that repeat and we begin to create formulas that stand for poetic form or for arrangements. For instance, in Mexican songs and algebra, the formula for the chorus of La Bamba, which is this, uh, is 2E plus F 2G plus 3H. Uh, this is E, F, G, and H. So we have 2E, F, 2G, and 3H. So that means, Ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba iré. Yo no soy marinero, yo no soy marinero, por ti seré, por ti seré, por ti seré. So, this becomes our formula. By simply changing the formula or applying it to other similar four-line stanzas, you can change or apply the arrangement to anything you want and be able to quickly tell the rest of the band so you can all do it together because we all know what it sounds like when you don't. So now that we have our formula, we can apply it to any four-line stanza that fits the meter. Uh, let's take uh, some verses in English that will fit the formula for La Bamba. So our formula is 2A, which is two times the first line, plus B, one time the second line, 2C, two times the third line, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we begin. When I'm singing La Bamba, when I'm singing La Bamba, I feel a spark, cause it comes from within, cause it comes from within, deep in my heart. Ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba, ay arriba iré. I was never a sailor. I was never a sailor, that's what I say, that's what I say, that's what I say, three times. And there is our formula. In the mid-level, we look at how variables can be substituted for rhythmic patterns, because so far we've been working with lyrics. Now we're going to work with music. And we can create compositions based on these patterns and these formulas. For instance, we have this formula here, which is a four-beat pattern, and we're going to call that variable A. And that is one, two, three, four. 
and we'll have a variable b which would be this one one two three four so now if we can make a small composition we make this formula which is 4a plus 4b and it becomes this one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and then one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four. Okay. So then let's try and play this formula. Four A plus four B. Okay, that's a very simple example. Now we can create more variables and have uh, more musical patterns and we can have a pattern C, one and two and three and four and etc. And we can create a more complicated formula like this one and we'll try to all play it together. In the advanced level, we solve real life problems with a formula. We are now professional musicians and we're in the recording studio. The client wants it to be a Mexican song in 6-8 time, 6 beats to every bar. And he doesn't want it to be cut off at the end. He wants the song to finish exactly at the 60 second mark. Our musical phrases are four bars long, which is pretty standard for Mexican folk music. And we set our metronome at 120 beats per minute. How many phrases should our song have to meet the requirements of the client? So we set our variables and we give it a formula. This is a formula that I give them. X being the number of phrases in the jingle, P is the number of bars in the phrase, L the length of the song in seconds, T the tempo of the song in beats per minutes, which we established to be 120, and B the time signature. And here is our formula. X, which is what we're solving for, how many phrases, is equal to the length of the song over 60 over the tempo multiplied by the time signature multiplied by the number of bars in the phrase. So we plug in the known values and we get the answer of five. And that means our song will have five phrases. Then we test the results by setting our metronome and playing the resulting phrases while one of the students clocks the length. And it's always very satisfying to find out just how accurate we can be in our calculations. Usually we can do this in an hour with a group of kids in elementary or high school. And now, do you think there is a connection between Mexican songs and algebra? Thank you for listening.